it's just a few drops. But yes, we do consume each other's blood on occasion for ritual purposes. He's much more hazard and hectic and chaotic where he's willing to just like cut his chest open with broken glass and be like, take my soul. He's literally like my exact physical type that I've been manifesting since I was four. Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox have crossed the line. Their relationship has gone from cringe to evil. These two are participating in rituals and consuming each other's blood. I'm not sure if they're doing this to become closer to each other or just closer to the top. So let's get into it. We're going to be talking about the bizarre relationship between Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly. Currently, these two are one of the most interesting relationships in Hollywood. They share a ton of PDA and a lot of personal comments about their love life. It's honestly hard to turn away. He was like, you're going to be naked tonight. And I was like, whatever you say, daddy, whatever daddy says. I don't know if you guys heard what Megan said there, but she just called MGK daddy. Bunny and I were cringing. Some others have even said that everything they do looks fake, as if they were only doing it for attention and not out of love. So is there a chance that they only got engaged for likes and clout? We hope that's not the case. That would very much be a red flag in their relationship. On the outside, you might just look at these two as an immature couple. I mean, they're super in love and that's great for them, but there are some weird things they like to do and I think they're just trying to grab headlines. But it's gotten to a point where people are starting to question their morals and their intentions because they have shared that they like to consume each other's blood, which I think is um, a boundary that a lot of people don't ever imagine and crossing. Yes, drank each other's blood might mislead people or like people are imagining us with like goblets and we're like Game of Thrones drinking each other's blood. It's just a few drops, but yes, we do consume each other's blood on occasion for ritual purposes only. <laughs> Maybe Megan is just clout chasing because she knows this is going to get her attention. But there's a lot of shady things happening in Hollywood. And there's no denying that there are blood sacrifices and rituals out here. So are these two participating in these evil acts for more fame? I don't like to get into these conspiracy theories, but... I mean, I've heard some things living out here and I haven't even been here a year. And there are articles where they call out these like blood harvesting events and things like that. But I do believe that these two are acting in some type of ritual to maybe get closer to each other or closer to the top. Some have branded Megan and MGK's rituals as a vampire act or unusual form of BDSM, while others see it as a version of ancient Greek therapy, bloodletting to cure illnesses. Okay, well, it's not like they're sick when they do this. It sounds like it's more of a BDMS thing. It is used for a reason and it is controlled where it's like, let's shed a few drops of blood and each drink it. He's much more haphazard and hectic and chaotic where he's willing to just like cut his chest open with broken glass and be like, take my soul. Let me bleed on you. <laughs> it doesn't not happen, let me tell you. Maybe not exactly like that, but it a version of that has happened many times. Hearing Megan describe it like that makes me feel like they're doing some evil satanic rituals. I mean, why are they talking about their souls and he's cutting himself and there's just like blood drinking? Like it's so gross. I can't even get to that point. And it's not safe. It's not like, oh, like we're so like rock star drinking each other's blood. Like it's so unhealthy to do this. There's really no benefits unless they're doing something with like the dark world and they get something out of it by doing that. Because these two are so famous, this caused a bunch of people to talk about Megan's statement. And there are some experts who claim that this is not safe. I mean, if you drink a couple of drops, 
drops of blood. It's not going to kill you, but there are risks, especially if that person has diseases. And I mean, I'm not claiming that Machine Gun Kelly has any diseases, but mm -hmm. something else I found interesting is that there's actually a condition out there for drinking people's blood. It's called clinical vampirism, which is pretty rare, but it's some type of syndrome, and it's a disorder which causes people to believe that they have a biological need to drink blood from either an animal or a human in order to maintain health and vitality. It's unlikely that these two have vampirism or whatever. I mean, Halloween has passed already. We're done. But they are obsessed with blood, which makes me feel like it is like a spiritual um, ritual, like evil thing they're doing. You guys may have seen this picture before, but Machine Gun Kelly posted this on Valentine's Day and wrote in his caption, My Bloody Valentine, speaking about Megan Fox. And as you guys can see, there's like some blood inside of this necklace. He also wrote in the caption, I wear your blood around my neck. And it's because he literally has a vial of blood in a necklace that Megan Fox gifted to him. Megan was actually going to Europe for work and he wanted to go with her, but he didn't have a passport, so he couldn't. And her way of comforting him was to provide him with a necklace with her blood inside of it, which really just sounds super creepy and kind of forced. Like, was it really for him or for some headline? There's more about Megan and MGK's relationship that may raise a few eyebrows. In February, MGK posted an array of photos of the two of them, one including a necklace containing a drop of Megan's actual DNA. The caption reading, I wear you around my neck, followed by a knife emoji again. So these two have a fascination with each other's blood, and maybe they are destined for each other because Machine Gun Kelly has been interested in Megan Fox even before he was Machine Gun Kelly. His real name is Colton, and I have a video exposing Machine Gun Kelly's dark past, but he claims that he used to have a picture of Megan on his wall, and he told his classmate that he was going to marry her one day. So it really seems like they were destined for each other. But let's go ahead and get into the beginning of their relationship. The pair officially met on set of a movie, but it turns out they actually ran into each other at a party in LA a few years before, but Megan claims that she never actually saw his face when they met, and she claimed that he smelled like weed. I'll tell you where we first met. Where did we first meet? At a GQ party. Facts. Oh, actually, tell that story. Right. You said to me... You smell like weed. And I said, I am weed. And then, you vanished. As you heard, Machine Gun Kelly replied with... I am weed. And then Megan claims that he disappeared like a ninja in a smoke bomb. She actually claims that she couldn't see his face in that moment because there was a spiritual reasoning. Quote, I think we weren't allowed to see each other yet. We weren't supposed to run into each other that night. So our souls, our spirit guides were luring us away from each other because you literally had no face. These two ended up meeting face to face later on because, you know, Megan claims that he was like, a ghostly figure at first, but they were on set of a movie titled Midnight in Switchgrass, which if you guys have seen that film, comment below, like, is it any good? I really haven't heard of it, so I don't know. I assume it's like mid. Megan claims that she manifested this relationship because when she went to the script reading, Colton, aka Machine Gun Kelly, wasn't there yet, and when she looked up who she was, she was like, oh no, I've been looking for this type of man since I was four years old. I can't imagine a four-year-old being capable of manifesting a man like Machine Gun Kelly because granted he has a very particular look so I don't know if I necessarily believe that. I mean she claims that he's her exact physical type that she's been manifesting since four years old. So what do you guys think of that because that sounds like BS. And then when I was in the table read there was still one <laughs> character that hadn't been cast and I was like who uh who's playing that character? And they were like, oh, Machine Gun Kelly. And I like kind of knew the name, but didn't. So I'm like, Machine Gun Kelly, I like look it up. And I was like, oh, we're gonna be in so much trouble. Cause he's literally like my exact physical type that I've been manifesting since I was four. She was quoted saying, I'm also four years older than him. So I think I made him. 
My thoughts and intentions grew him into the person that he is. Who knows what he would have looked like or been like if it wasn't for me. So um, also this makes me think like, you know, <laughs> through their relationship, Machine Gun Kelly looks a little bit more drained and drained over time. Megan keeps looking younger and better and Machine Gun Kelly looks drained. So I feel like she's sucking the life out of him. But it is clear that this movie was what brought them together. MGK was going to quit the movie, but he said that he stayed solely to meet and do his scenes with Megan Fox. And when filming shut down because of COVID, the couple started hanging out more and more. And then in May of 2020, MGK released his music video for Bloody Valentine, and of course Megan was front and center playing his girlfriend. So their relationship grew very quickly, and it seems like it all happened on set while they were away, but then once they got home, they went on a proper date and really officially began dating. Our first date was epic. Our first date I picked her up in That was our first school. like out of the house Cadillac. date, but. And I had roses. Thousands of roses. Thousands of roses bedded on a, on a hill looking over Topanga Canyon. Mm -hmm. And we ate sushi. sushi. We shared a kiss. I and our, our, our first date, our first date, we breathed each other. That was all we did. Their date sounds a little bit cuter when you hear them talk about it together, but Colton was speaking about this on Ellen and it didn't sound as great because he wanted to go and like climb onto some structure and he made Megan do it. And I guess the paparazzi caught it. I survived this one, but this is our first date. Um, and that's, yeah. <laughs> That's her climbing down off of a dangerous three-story balcony. After that, MGK explained that he made Megan climb the balcony in heels because he used to hang out there and wanted her to see his world for a minute. He must be her perfect type because a lot of people would not be down. Personally, I would be down to climb, but I've also never worn heels and can't imagine doing what she did. Isn't she like an action figure in some movies or something? Honestly, I've actually never even seen Jennifer's body. I need to go and watch that. I might do that soon. But on the same Valentine's Day that Machine Gun Kelly posted his vial of Megan's blood, she also posted a poem. And this poem is a little bit disturbing because she called him her magical and haunted, kinetic, and tortured rehab Barbie. Here's the poem in its entirety, and it's really, um... A mess of words uh it seems like she's trying to be you know very dark and spiritual and he's lawless and a creative genius which um i'm honestly i love seeing love like this where people are so infatuated and um obsessed with their partner i mean don't we all want to have a love so strong like this but there's something about their relationship that feels chaotic and bizarre and a little bit fake. I mean, I've heard of twin flames before. I'm hip. It's like a soulmate connection where you are just one soul in two different bodies, which is, you know, very spiritual. And I, I don't like, you know, I'm not dissing it. I'm sure it exists in some capacity, but at the same time, they seem like they've moved very quickly and they both have very different lives. Megan already has three children of her own. Machine Gun Kelly has a kid. They both have very established you know beings so I feel like they just came together and dropped everything else I mean if you look at Megan's Instagram you really don't see her children anywhere a lot of people don't even know that she's a mother which honestly I praise because like a lot of these kids like the Kardashians are forced down our throats so it is refreshing to hear that she's a mother and we don't even really know about it but also I hope she's there for her children because it seems like she's spending a long time on these poems on Instagram for Colton. She wrote in this poem about guns, um, addiction, uh, lots of blood, um, tantric night terrors, um, binding rituals. Um, psychedelic hallucinations. Honestly, this all sounds really horrible to me. She ended it with, and the kind of sex that would make Lucifer clutch his rosary. So uh, that sounds exhausting. Well, as you probably noticed, Megan and MGK have really enjoyed the constant attention they've received since they got together. However, that attention has not necessarily been of the good kind. This couple has made the whole world cringe in secondhand embarrassment because they present themselves as dangerous lovers whose relationship is destructive and passionate 100% of the time. Now I want to talk to you guys about another incident involving a knife. So Khloe Kardashian and Travis Barker are close friends with Megan Fox and MGK. 
And I guess at some point, Travis gave Colton a knife that had an engravement from his new album. And in front of Megan, he decided to throw up the knife and catch it in his hand. But unfortunately, he didn't catch it in his hand, which he was trying to be a tough guy and impress Megan in that moment, which is just a little bit cringe to hear about. I had this, Travis got me this, the, uh, he got me a knife that was, uh, that had an engravement from the new album on it. And I was like, oh, check this out. This is sick. And I threw it up and it came and stuck in my hand. You see that right here? I do see that. Yeah, yeah. that was from when a knife stuck in my, cause you know how you throw it up and you're supposed to catch it. I looked at her, I was like, check this out. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> You were the coolest dude I've ever met in my life. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And then the next morning, as soon as she left, I was like, <laughs> Yo, I need stitches real quick. Yeah. Maybe this is what Megan is looking for, but it sounds a little bit like self destructive and like borderline like self mutilation. Like, we're not into that. I'm not into that at all. Maybe they are, but I feel like that is a toxic relationship. I mean, nonetheless, Colton, Machine Gun Kelly, is very reckless. And there have been other times where it seems like Megan's a little bit fed up with that because Megan is more mature. Granted, she's lost in space most of the time. She seems a little bit more mature than Machine Gun Kelly is. I mean, here's a clip of him snapping a bottle against his head. It breaks and he cuts his head open. And clearly, Megan is uncomfortable. Proceeded to take a bottle of champagne and cut chunk. And that resulted in a pretty gruesome scene. And in the background of the videos taken, Megan seemed extremely concerned, whereas MGK seemed to kind of be enthralled by it. So with all of the extreme behavior that MGK has been exhibiting, could Megan be at the end of her rope? But you know what? Megan must be into it because they have a crazy sex life like she wrote. Something that would make, what, Lucifer clutch his pearls or <laughs> clutch his rosary? Megan decided to share this text message between her stylist where she wrote, was this blue outfit expensive? Probably because all these celebrities wear rented clothing, but she wrote, because we just cut a hole in the crotch so we could have sex. Uh, the designer stylist claims that they can fix it, but um, it's just a little bit like weird to share these type of messages publicly. Maybe that's a different kind of love I've never experienced before because I've always been a little bit more private with my love life, but it's done well for them because now they're engaged. On January 12th, 2022, they were engaged and there's something a little bit off about this ring. So there's something special about the design of this ring. Machine Gun Kelly did it on his own, and there's an emerald, her birthstone, and a diamond, his birthstone, on two magnetic bands of thorns that draw together as two halves of the same soul forming in the obscure heart that is our love. Of course, their engagement made headlines, but not for the right reasons, because it turns out this ring has a dark side. If Megan were to take it off, the thorns would like stab into her finger. Um, we don't know how like strong these thorns are or do they go straight through her finger, but it's like kind of an evil sentiment that she cannot get out of their bond, their relationship relationship that they've trapped each other in. They haven't been together for a very long time. So imagine in a couple years they get tired of each other. I, I mean, I can't imagine being like this and having a ring where it's going to harm me when I take it off. Then in January 2022, the couple got engaged. And this is where things started to seemingly go downhill. Because Megan Fox's ring, though it is gorgeous, MGK designed it so that it has thorns on it. So if she ever tries to take it off, it will literally hurt her. So these two got engaged very quickly in a destructive way. And some people believe that they're trying to keep up with their friends Courtney and Travis Barker because they're both kind of the rocker style with the rocker chicks. You know, Courtney's all brand new after she started her relationship with Travis Barker. So maybe these two are just trying to keep up. And it was that Megan ended the long and sweet caption of the video by sharing that after the proposal, they drank each other's blood. To each their own, we guess. But blood drinking aside, even if the sweet video melted most people's hearts, others were wondering, would that proposal have actually happened if Courtney and Travis hadn't gotten engaged only a few months prior? 
There's no denying that these two make an interesting couple, and it seems like they're down for adventures. Megan has shared stories about their ayahuasca experience, which ayahuasca is a drug that makes you hallucinate, and she claims that she did it with her mans in a proper setting with indigenous people. I've talked to people who have done ayahuasca, and usually when you go into it, you have some type of intention or something you want to get out of this, and I'm not entirely sure what their intention Intention was but ultimately Megan went to hell um, nothing glamorous about it it's all a part of sort of making you vulnerable so that you surrender to the experience and the entire thing starts with something called vomitivo I hope I'm allowed to divulge this that it's okay that I share but I'm encouraging it um, so you go and we were with 20 other strangers and you all line up at like the, the edge of the rainforest over this weird fence and you go three by three and you drink lemongrass tea until you like by n not your own volition, just vomit everything out of your body. Personally, I never really want to do this drug. If you've done it before, comment below and share your experience. But like, it just kind of scares me. And I'm just like, you know, I'm not ready for those type of things. And now let's get to the part where she shares that she went to hell because I don't really believe this. I feel like she's being a little bit dramatic, but maybe it's this like psychological hell that she's describing. So we did it for three nights. It was incredibly intense. I went to Everybody's journey is different. The second night, I went to, to hell for eternity. Um, yeah. And to just knowing eternity is um, like t torture in itself because there was no beginning, middle, or end. So you have like a real ego death. Wait, wait, no, no. How do you arrive and understand that that's what the moment is? Because is there a sign next exit hell? Is it, I, <laughs> I mean, it's I, I was it's your own psychological hell, basically, is the point of the medicine, right? This is a medicine that goes, it surpasses like anything you could do with talk therapy or like hypnotherapy or any of those things. It just goes straight into your soul. Did she go to hell? I don't know. I mean, at this point, there's so much satanic stuff in their relationship. I wouldn't be surprised. And that's why I wanted to bring it up, because I do feel like there's some connection between like blood, evil, devil, hell, and, you know, Megan Fox and her relationship with MGK. And maybe that's how, like, you know, they both have gotten so successful recently that they're doing this together. But I did hear a clip from this one creator who claims that it's unlikely she actually went to hell because you can't just, like, you know, go there and then leave. Did Megan Fox really go to hell? Well, personally, I don't think she did. I mean, she herself, when she was pressed on the matter, said, well, no, it was more of a psychological experience. And the truth is this, if a person goes to hell for eternity, there's no coming back. There are no fire exits in hell. If I went to hell with my partner, I would assume we'd be together for life, but I really, I don't want to go. I have no interest in going down there, but it does seem like they had some rocky times in their relationship. There was one point where Megan looked super annoyed with MGK on the red carpet, and it's just not normal for them because usually they're all over each other, but Megan looks really disgusted by him in this clip. But then again, maybe Megan was just tired. I mean, she probably didn't get her fix of blood for that day to keep her going. Their relationship has progressed though. In July, 2022, we learned that they have actually finished planning their wedding, which I'm really interested to hear how their wedding goes. Like, is there gonna be, you know, blood and evil and satanic things there? Will she be wearing black? Will Lucifer be there himself to marry them? I already know that the Kardashians are going to be there and they're probably going to be all wearing black. It's going to look like a funeral service. But it does seem like these two have had some relationship issues. I mean, they were engaged in January, so I'm surprised they're not married yet because everyone in Hollywood, their, you know, their relationships last like two to three years. So it's like, you know, you meet, a few months later, you're engaged and you're pretty much married that same year. In October 2022, we learned that Megan and MGK are still getting married, but they've had some major ups and downs in their relationship. Quote, they worked on their problems and worked really hard to get to the place where they are today. It's still a struggle at times and they tend to have a lot of ups and downs. He's making a lot of effort to be more mature. I said that early. I literally said that earlier that he's immature. And I'm glad that she's seeing it. Um, he's not easy to deal with, and he still has this teenage side to him. 
Megan is waking up. That's why, it's, I, you know, Megan is, again, in space, outer space, out of this world, the same place where Catherine McBroom is. Um, but he's just so immature. And he also has a depressive side to him. I've heard before that he's, like, struggled with wanting to you know, harm himself. And that's really unfortunate. And I hope that these two can ultimately lift each other up. But I just have a feeling that they're just both a little bit too extreme. Like we need like one that's a little bit more grounded and, you know, who can hold this together because clearly Colton Machine Gun Kelly has mental health issues. And we've seen this before. We've talked about it on my channel. And it's kind of unfortunate because I feel like these two are like a train wreck waiting to happen. And they're both parents. So they have a lot to be responsible for. But I want to hear what you guys think of this video in the comments below. Here's my email if you guys have any other video ideas for me, and I'll see you in a new video soon. Bye, guys.